what is going on everybody we are here today talking about my echo cs 4 450p sorry the lights shining on i was trying to get a light to shine on it this is probably arguably my favorite chainsaw and i have several brands all the top brands uh, i probably have a dozen chainsaws i don't know i haven't counted you've seen them on here so my friends at hippa 360 sent me a little care package for it the cool thing about this one this is an older model echo is paid for itself it's not a cliche i have <laughs> i have used this thing a lot and i keep taking it even though it's a 45 cc i do have bigger saws i do have smaller saws i have different brands of saws i always grab this echo i think echo is the most underrated chainsaw maker there is i like echo as a company the backpack blowers are top notch too i'm not a fan i you know i got their weed eater they sent to me for free forever ago when you know long long time ago before they was doing the uag and all that i was an ambassador they did not give me this i bought this before or before i was an ambassador i think i can't remember long time ago has no affiliation with echo now so that's just me being honest i love this freaking chainsaw all right back to hippa 360.com i'm gonna share their amazon link i also try to share the link to this full chisel chain it's not skip tooth it is not safety chain as you can see in the gullet these are cheap like 13 dollar chains i bought these i just wanted to mention it real quick and they eat that's the best i want to say 13 14 dollars something i don't know that i've ever spent on a chain besides you know well for the price it's the best and i exclusively buy the name brand chains all the time so i don't know why this chain's so good you know it is not a safety chain be careful about kickback and stuff i just want to get that out of the way all right let's get back to hippa hipa 360.com and in their amazon stores what i link so they sent me just a little care kit they asked me what i had and i said you know what i've got all the stuff from my other chainsaws but i do not have a new filter for this so they sent me a little care kit brand new air filter. i do like how these old echoes i don't maybe the new ones do this i don't know i don't have a new echo chainsaw i have this one i love these you know these pleated air filters that's in a circle you know reminds you of the old carbureted engines on cars or even the one fuel injection was first introduced the throttle body just set up on top you could turn the breather lid upside down make it sound like a four barrel you remember that guys anybody old enough this kit came with a fuel filter and it came with a fuel line i don't know if this is a kit you can order or not that's what they sent me so that is awesome all right so what we're going to do is we're going to put the air filter because it did come with a spark plug I already put it in there to see if it run and it did and i'm making this video again because the memory card corrupted all right we got to use a scrunch you don't got to use a scrunch you can use your own tool kit these things are called scrunches yes that's the name don't let the company the dealers used to it's my local dealer before they went out of business retired they would keep these scrunches right here this is a, coming from a steel t25 torx or they'll come with a flat if usually for chainsaws this come from a weed eater but still used to keep these my local dealer and sell them for five bucks a piece even though they come with a weed eater so remember when you're buying these chainsaws they come with a little care package with usually a bottle of oil the owner's manual safety glasses and a scrunch if they're not handing that crap to you demand it because they're reselling it that's one of the dirtiest things i've ever seen but anyway i digress scrunch stands for wrench and screwdrivers screw wrench scrunch scrunch all right that's what it's really called we always come with a t25 torx pretty much we don't need it i was just show, showing you because deco has just like the other brands not all brands but another major brand that i use husqvarna they will have a little slot right there so if you can't get over with your fingers which i can i done been in there we'll just demonstrate 
you would get a screwdriver, flathead, or your scrunch. There went my light. And you would just simply turn. All right. Let me set my light back up because it does help a little bit. And if you can see the oiler where you put the chain, uh, the bar oil. See, you can just stick that in there. And the gas. See the little hole? That's why these usually come with a uh, flat on chainsaws. They all integrate. Like that. All right. Well, we broke it loose already anyway. I was just demonstrating how to change an air filter on a chainsaw. Ta-da. I done cleaned it, so don't be impressed. If you can tell, there's a brand spanky, spanky new, brand spanky new uh, spark plug that HIPAA sent in that kit, that care kit. I guess it's a kit you buy, I don't know. I would assume so. Echo's super easy. You go left. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Now sometimes this could be real tight. You don't need to gorilla tighten this. So, mine was pretty tight the first time I took this off. A while back. I mean, not a while back. The other day when I put the spark plug in. And this was the one last one that was in it. And I blew out the debris. Do you know you're really not these pleated air filters like this? You're not supposed to take an air filter to air hose to them. Because it damages it and it'll just let more debris in. I bet y'all didn't know that. Now you can... See, so just barely tapping it, beat them out a little bit, but don't put compressed air in these pleats. We'll run it. I know I did it for years. Trust me, I think I still accidentally do it. Don't do it. Let me get this gun out of there. All right, so see how simple, and if you was changing the spark plug, you just pull this off. A lot of times you can't get the boot off, which I can, because I just did it the other day. You can put some anti, hold on. You can put some, where's that? Here you go. I'll just show it to you. Anti-seize or dielectric grease on the spark plugs. Well, right there's even a plug on the dang pitcher. Up under this boot. You can put it around the threads too, so it's anti-seize. And it, it will prevent corrosion on the threads and anti-seize and corrosion up here at the top so you could be able to pull that off easily see it's in there right now dielectric dielectric grease you can use that for a lot of stuff i never see nobody use it but it's a thing all right so we take the new filter in our hands and we stick it all about and that's what it's all about done what about that so you can do a lot of this stuff at home. Tighten this back up. Sorry the heat pump was so loud, it just now cut off. There's two heat pumps in this house and the inside unit happens to be in the garage. The other unit, inside unit's in the freaking attic upstairs. So it's quiet up there, but down here, how loud. So apologies for that. And again, you don't have to gorilla tighten it. It is tight. All right. <clears throat> Maybe I should make another video of this right here. I use a hook tool. Let me show you what I do to change these. And you get the air filter, you see the little screw, you see the little bolt. Just like in health class, the bolt goes in the hole. And you just, now you can snuggy snug these. I don't know why somebody would. Your strength, if you're very low strength, like if you got arthritis bad or you're just aging or you're just broke down like me, you can put a little tension on it. I wouldn't like eighth of a turn once it's tight. If you want to, that's up to you. <clears throat> it don't need much, but we'll just go over that a second. How I would change this fuel filter for y'all. This thing, I always, it gets so tight. You about have to do that with this the fuel tank all righty and there is the fuel tank you see it in there you see the wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. i don't put this out every time you fold those things right there the catch is in and out it makes it brittle over the years so right there it is see it bottom left now what you do is i use a hook tool 
Have you ever heard of a hook tool? Do y'all use hook tools? Let me find my hook tool while I'm talking. And what you do is you go in there and here's the line. I'm not taking this apart to show you which way the line runs or anything. And here's the fuel filter, but I'm gonna just show you how to change this. This is easy. Now, I recommend hook tools. If I could find the things. They're usually in this drawer right here. Well, what about that? It looks like I ain't gonna be able to... You know what a hook tool looks like, right? All right, here's one. This ain't the one I use usually. I mean, I have. You see that? This is a little cheap Harbor Freight one. No big deal. And clean it. That's what you do. You clean it up real good. Then you would go in here with some light and you grab it and just see here it comes. It's already working. See, there it is. I'm not taking... First, you need to take this out. Then you pull that out. Gosh dang it. I done started now. I'm going to have to finish it. Drive me crazy. All right. <laughs> I done started it. God dang it. Okay, I'm gonna have to move it. Right there's the fuel filter, like I told you. Just find, find out what side it's on. I just dropped it back down in there. And there it is. See it? I like the other hook tool because it will hook hook it. And there's the hose that the kit come with. And Voila, there is what's called a fuel filter that goes in the tank. They have, it's weighted. That way if you turn the saw on its side, it follows the fuel. That goes with a weed eater or anything. A lot of times when you got a brand new Husqvarna, for instance, you turn them real fast, they're lighter and you have to wait till they completely absorb in fuel. But when they get older, they'll quit doing that. Turn the weed eater on its side real quick. That's because when they're brand, brand new, Depends on which type it is. And Husqvarna uses a different type that don't keep much weight, fuel weight in it. You see how this has a lot of fuel weight that absorbs? So you would just take this off. You see this little, little band? You just pull that off. I don't think it needs it, to be honest with you. Chainsaw runs like a scalded dog. So I'm just going to put it down in there. And here's the new one. That's what it looks like. And you just pop it. You pull that little wire back that's on the hose. Pull that off and put a new one. Put stick this one back in the hose end, and move the wire back over it. A little clamp, and it's done. That's it. It's really that simple. I need to put this somewhere where it won't get dirty, though. I should have just went ahead and changed it right now, but I don't want to. And then you would take this. These are all general, same. You just fold it. But like I said, you keep doing this so bunches of times and it'll eventually get bread and break and then you would re-secure it. And as far as as far as winterizing, I don't do it. Here it is in January 20th or something. I do not winterize. I run them every couple of weeks. And that's all I do. But this is not the ideal hook tool. It'll work. The one I like is the one that looks like Peter Pan, Captain Hook. You know, it's like that. That way you just can easily, and be gentle with it. You don't want to cut a hole in a hose, especially if you don't have that hose. This hose. If you just bought a fuel filter, you don't want to cut that apart or you have to go buy one. Then you got to go to the store. Then we all know what happens at the store. You buy something else that you didn't even need. Or... <laughs> So, you know how it is. All right, that's it. I'll stop there. I'll try to make some more awesome mechanic videos. It's so simple. Anybody can do it. My, uh, the Boxer Bulldog here could do it. And she's not the smartest dog in the world, but I think she could even do this. It's a fantastic chainsaw. I highly recommend HIPAA360.com. It got here in just a couple of days. Now my filter and everything is done. I ran it with that spark plug. The spark plug worked. The air filter worked. Everything's good. So we'll see how long the old Echo lasts. It's probably going to last 10 plus more years, I would imagine, as long as I take care of it. I haven't beaten it to death, and 
I flip the bar every shortening or every change a chain and that's all I've done with it and then this one has the numbers for the chains on the bars so that's very nice when companies do that I love a quick reference guide even if they had a sticker up under here anywhere I like that I don't like to look in a box or the book see what chain I need offhand or anything you know what I'm saying I wish ever the piece of equipment had a very specific parts diagram with all it bold letters where people can see it good a lot of people can't see good you know I ain't gonna point no fingers at myself but the older I'm getting the harder it is to see these little tiny numbers but anyway that's the video that's it for now links in the description peace and chicken grease